Sound test, cover your ears. I went from this to this. It's better. Palette Gamer OC 3070. When it's slotted and lit up, it is the most beautiful card. Not only that, but in general, the 30 series Gamer OC C were the second best cards in quality after Asus Trix, according to the internet. I bought this one second hand, it was used for mining, and the fans took a toll, so I decided to replace them. Before you start doing anything, make sure that you are grounded or discharged. The bad news is that if you want to get to the cooling, you need to take out the motherboard, and that means you need to also repaste. Fortunately, it's pretty straightforward, so there's not much you can screw up. I bought the replacement fans on AliExpress. Most stores were selling them for like 8 euros, but there was one who was offering them for 22. So I took those, even though I knew they are probably used. Make sure you test the fans if they are working, so you don't open up the GPU for nothing. You can use a PSU to test this. On a Molax connector, the black should be ground, yellow should be 12 volts, and red should be 5 volts. These fans are 12 volts, so I'm going to wire it accordingly. But if on some different GPU you have 5 volt fans, you need to use the 5 volt wire. I didn't use Molax directly, I used this extension for better accessibility. So for me, the black is ground and red is 12 volts. The pinout of PWM fans should be universal, so that is the first wire should be ground, second wire should be 12 volts. There's always a marking which pin is the first one. First connect the ground wire, then the live 12 volt wire. The first fan works. And the other two also. Alright, so let's open up the GPU. Remove these 11 screws to get rid of the back plates. Next, remove these two bigger screws on the I.O. panel. And then the last four screws of the GPU heatsink. Be careful, don't pull on it too hard, we need to disconnect the fans first. This proved to be the most difficult thing on the whole repair. The white connector on the right had these mini latches and I was unable to disconnect it so I had to pull it out with the whole base. And then after it was out, I had a hard time to plugging it out of the base, but I managed it and plugged the base back onto the motherboard. Put the board aside so you don't damage it accidentally. And finally, we can get to the four screws that are holding together the cooling. Make sure that your desk is clean. I just flipped the panel with the thermal pads and laid it on the table. Even though there is no direct contact with the green mats, you should still be careful. You don't want the thermal pads to get dirty. Before taking out the old fans, look at the cabling and how it is laid down. You want to probably imitate that so you don't have to think about it when you install the new ones. The fans that I bought are probably from a different model, so I had to improvise with the cabling a bit. Now unscrew the nine screws and you can take out the fans. I replaced the middle one first and then the other two afterwards. I didn't want to get confused with the cabling. Push the fans in properly and don't worry too much about overscrewing because the screws keep spinning in the plastic after a certain stage. Well, at least in my unit. It is important that there are no loose ends on the cabling, otherwise they could be flapping around and making noises. Also be aware of the cable management on the very end of the cables, because this is the final result that I got, but maybe there was an approach that would have looked nicer. Now the fans and cabling is all set, put back the heatsink, flip on top of it the panel with the thermal pads. You need to position the heatsink precisely, otherwise the four screws that are holding it all together will not fit. And put in the four screws, take a cloth, isopropyl, clean the chip and the heatsink. You can also clean the other components. And yeah, don't touch the thermal pads. You will leave oil on them. Squeeze out a bit of thermal paste onto the chip. Use a plastic bag or one of those little spatulas and apply thin but solid layer of thermal paste over the whole area. Yeah, my camera was switching randomly to like 10 FPS, so sorry about that. Afterwards, plug all three connectors back in and place the board back in its position. Be careful here, ideally you want to place it precisely at the first go, so you don't have to move it around and smear the thermal paste. So just flip it, hold it like one centimeter above the pads, position it precisely according to the screw holes, and then set it down. Hold it in place, put on top the bracket, and screw in the four screws that hold the heatsink together with the motherboard. Don't tighten the screws one by one, there's like a general practice. First screw in the screws just moderately, and then tighten them afterwards, after all the screws are already in. And also, don't overscrew it. It should be tight, but not superman tight. If you cannot turn the screw anymore when you are holding the screwdriver with two fingers only, it is good enough. Now the two IO panel screws. And lastly, the back plate with its 11 screws.
Alright, we're done. So I tested the fans at 100% speed, and it is significantly quieter. According to Adobe Premiere, the old fans are peaking somewhere around minus 3 decibels, and the new fans are peaking somewhere around minus 6 decibels. So that's 3 decibel difference, which is like 50% of perceived volume, or something like that. I don't know. And again, the fans that I purchased looked secondhand, so maybe it could have been even better if I got new ones. Maybe these are new ones, who knows. However, in the end, I'm really satisfied with the result. If you found this video useful, like and subscribe, it makes my GPU quieter. Alright, that's it.